Hi, this is video number one for chapter three, and we're talking about algebraic expressions in this section. There's lots of vocab we're going to get to, and we'll do lots of examples together. But the target is to identify terms and like terms, and then use different properties to simplify um, the algebraic expressions that we have. So it goes with section 3.1 in the book. There's the pages. Make sure you copy all this down on your sheet. Um, if, remember, always if you have any questions or you're confused about something in the video, bring those questions back to class with you. Um, and that's where we'll start going over things tomorrow. All right. So our vocab. First vocab word is algebraic expression. And that just means it's an expression with numbers, letters, and symbols. Uh, there's no equal sign, so it could look like 2x squared plus 3y minus z. Anything with just numbers, letters, and symbols. And we call those letters in algebra now, or as we're getting ready for algebra, we call those letters variables. So you'll see numbers, variables, and symbols. The next word is term. So a term is each piece or each part of an algebraic expression separated by the plus or minus signs. And we're going to remember now, I think we mentioned this in class, that in seventh grade now, the plus and positive mean the same thing, and the minus or the negative sign are actually the same thing. So in my example up here, I have three terms, 2x squared, the next term is 3y, and the next term is negative z or minus a z. All right, and our last vocab on this page is like term. So those are the matching parts. They're the terms that go together. They have to have the same variable and the same exponent. So like terms could be, uh, for example, 2x and 5x and 7x. Those are all like terms. They all have the same variable to the same power. These would not be like terms. 8 is not a like term with those because it doesn't have an x. 9x squared is not a like term with my first set because it has an exponent of 2, a power of 2, and these ones don't. So it has to have the same variable, the same letter, and the same power or exponent. We're going to keep going. The next one is to identify. A lot of times your directions will say to identify, and that just means find and list them out. So it'll say like find the terms, or sorry, identify the terms. Find all the terms and just list them out. Coefficient, kind of a fancy word. It means um, the number multiplied by the variable, or the number, I'm going to add this, in front of a variable. So if I had like 3x squared, 3 is the coefficient, or negative 2y to the fifth power, the negative 2 is the coefficient. It's the number out front of, written in front of a variable, and it means that they're being multiplied together. So this means 3 times x squared, and this means negative 2 times y to the fifth power. And uh, vocab number 6 is a constant. That's just a number by itself, no variable with it. So 8 is a constant, negative 17 is a constant, 4 is a constant not multiplied by any variable. Okay, then we have combining like terms. So to combine like terms means to find and put all the like terms together as just one term. For example, if I had 8x and 7x, if I combine those, I could actually simplify it and write it as just 15x's. Or if I had um, negative 3y and 9y, I could combine those together, and overall, I would just have 6y. So all of the rules we learned for integers are going to apply big time here as we combine like terms. We'll do more examples of these. Simplest form. Um, so that's just to write an algebraic expression with no more parentheses and no more like terms. So we have to get rid of parentheses, get rid of the like terms, and then it will be in simplest form. So let's do a couple examples. It says identify the terms, like terms, constants, coefficients, and then also simplify the expression. So there's a lot to do here for each one. All right, let's do terms first. Or well, we'll start with number one. For the terms, I have three terms. I have a y, and then that's separated with a plus or minus sign with the 10. 
and then I have negative 3 halves y. So that's my last term. Those are your three terms. I want to point out that this negative sign is glued to that 3 halves. It's negative 3 halves y. The y is positive, the 10 is positive, and this last term is a negative. Okay, like terms. Well, for this one, I have a y and a y. Same variable, same exponent. Those two are like terms. Constants, number by itself. This guy is a constant. Not attached to any variable, so 10 is a constant. You should be writing these down. So I'll put constant, like term, like term, and coefficients. So the coefficient, I just like to abbreviate it, would be the numbers in front of the variables. So since I have two terms right there, the two like terms, this one and this one, that have the y, I need to write down whatever the number is in front of them. The first one, it doesn't look like there's a number in front of it, but that's actually going to be an invisible one. So I have a coefficient of 1 on the first y, and then a coefficient of negative 3 halves right there on the second y. So those are my coefficients. All right, so to simplify it, i got to get rid of the like terms. i got to actually put them together. So um, let's see, 1y and negative 3 halves y, if I group them, that would give me negative half of a y. When I do 1 and negative 3 halves, I get negative 1 half. And then I still just have the 10. So this is my simplified expression. I don't have any more like terms I can put together. No parentheses to get rid of. I'm good. All right, let's quickly go through number 2 and 3. All right, you guys are going to write it down, but let's just talk it through. Terms. I have 1 two, three, four terms in this one. Um, like terms, I'd be looking for the ones that have the same variable to the same power. So this and that one are like terms. Those are the two that have r to the second power. This guy, 7r, is just a term by itself, doesn't have anybody to pair up with. And then negative 9 is going to be a constant because it has no variable. Then we need coefficients, okay. So coefficients would be everything in front of a variable. Looks like I have two, seven in front of that variable. And again, this one is actually a negative one. When there's no number, it's a one, invisible one. So those are my coefficients. And then to simplify it, let's see, I gotta put the uh, like terms together. So right here, 2r squared and negative r squared would combine to make just 1r squared, or r squared. And then I have nothing to combine with the 7r and nothing to combine with the 9. They just come along. That's your simplified expression. And in the next one, terms. Well, I have 7, 4p, negative 5, p, and 2q, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 terms. Let's find the like terms. Uh, the p's can go together, so these two are like terms. And also, let me switch colors, these two, the constants, are still like terms with each other because they pair together. They have no variable, so they actually match up together. And then the q over there is by itself, nobody to pair up with. No like terms with that one. Constants. Well, uh, the 7 and the five, negative 5 are your constants. 7 and negative 5. Coefficients. Numbers in front of the variables. Looks like I have a 4. I have a 1 here, an invisible 1, and a 2 with the Q. Notice that I'm not writing the variables, just the numbers in front of them. And then simplify. So, when I simplify it, let's see, the p's put together would make 5 p's. The q is just a 2q. And then the constants put together, 
7 and negative 5 make 2. So that would be my simplified expression. Okay, here's some for you to try. Make sure you find the terms, like terms, constants, coefficients, and then simplify it. Everything we just did on the previous examples, but you try it this time. So pause, and then we'll come back and go through the answers. Okay, here's the answers, but take some time to really go over it carefully. Um, make sure you actually found all the things, identified all the parts they needed you to, and then let me know if you have questions. Bring this back tomorrow if there's anything that's still confusing. But we got a couple more, one more um, set of examples to try. And that is using the distributive property. So we learned um, in the last unit that the distributive property is when you have some number out front of parentheses and then it gets multiplied by whatever's inside the parentheses. And we did some examples with that before, but let's look at it because I don't think we've done it before with fractions. So let me talk this through with you. If I have a negative fraction out front, that negative fraction or the, the fraction has to get multiplied by both of the things inside the parentheses. Well, there's actually a shortcut. I want you to write this down. Shortcut when multiplying by a fraction. And that is to just divide by the denominator. Let me show you what that looks like. Negative 1 half times 6n. Well, I can just divide by 2. So I have a negative times a positive. I know I'm going to get a negative answer. And right here, 6 divided by the 2, since the 2 is in the denominator, would give me 3n. Another way to think of that is just half of 6 is 3. And then I need half of 2, or sorry, half of 4 right here. Well, again, just divide by the denominator. 4 divided by 2 is 2. So that's what I get when I actually do the distributive property. And then I bring down this 2n. Okay? The parentheses I put there just to show that's what was in the parentheses, but I don't really need them. They don't do anything for me. Now I'm just looking for any like terms to combine. So it looks like I have negative 3n and 2n. That would make negative n. Okay, sorry, we're back. That would give me negative n. And then I still just have that plus 2 that can't combine with anything else. So that is my simplified expression. And let's try one more. Here I have to multiply the 4, <coughs> sorry, the 4 by both things inside the parentheses. Okay, hold that thought. We're going to do this one. So I actually want to think of this as a negative 4 being multiplied by the things inside the parentheses. So negative 4 times 3 fourths, well, when I multiply by a fraction, it's just like I'm dividing by that 4, and multiplying by 4 and dividing by 4 will cancel out. So all of this actually just gives me negative 3x, and then I'll switch colors, and we are going to be doing the negative 4 times the negative 1 fourth. Again, Multiplying by a fraction means to divide by that denominator. So when I multiply by negative 4 and divide by this 4, a negative times a negative is actually going to be a positive 1. And then I have, I just have to bring this 7 down. So 7 minus 3x plus 1. Look for any like terms. So I've got a constant and a constant. 7 and 1 make 8. And then just bring down the minus 3 x. So that one's pretty complicated. There's a lot going on with negatives and fractions. We'll do more together. At least you've seen one example. You're going to try a couple now, right now as practice on this slide. And then we'll check them, but we'll do more together in class. So pause and try these. These are a little easier without the fractions, but I still have to just multiply whatever's out front times whatever's inside the parentheses, rewrite the whole thing out, find any like terms, combine them together, and simplify it. Again, multiply, distribute, so that gave me all of this. Find any like terms, I had some g's and g's, put those together, and simplify it. That's it. All right, thanks for listening.